LiPo chargers are usually powered by one of two methods. We either have dedicated AC chargers allowing you to use them at home. You can get ones like this, which are dual chargers. This has both an XT60 for powering off DC, as well as a mains input, or you'll get more portable chargers like this one that just have the DC input on the back, allowing you to power it either from your car or a larger battery in the field. Today though, we're gonna be taking a look at this, the B6 Neo from SkyRC. This is a portable DC charger that has that traditional DC XT60 input, but it also has a USB-C input allowing you to power this charger from a power delivery compatible adapter. What that means is you're no longer restricted to either using mains or that traditional DC input, and it means you can use things like your power adapter for your MacBook or any other USB-C power delivery device to charge your batteries out and about. On the DC side, it supports 10 to 28 volts, and it supports supports the power delivery protocol up to PD 3.0, up to a maximum of 80 watts. Now, this charger is a really small, lightweight and portable charger. It's very easy and simple to use. We've just got three buttons. We've then got our DC inputs as well as our power delivery. And then on the other side, we've got our balance port and our DC output. Looking around the rest of it, on the back, you'll find a fan on the back cover here with a do not cover section. And then around the rest of it is just little cooling vents all the way around. Around, and then we've got our display here on the front. Now powering up is nice and easy. We simply plug in our power. We're gonna use power delivery on this. You'll then see the screen will boot up. Give us a warning to never leave the charger unsupervised. And then when you press that button, it then jumps past to the main screen. Now this home screen is what shows you all of the status for the current battery or whatever is connected on the DC output. So for instance, if I just grab myself a light bulb and plug it in, we're gonna plug in the main port first and then we're gonna plug in the balance. You can now see on the front, it's giving us the voltage, 25.16, then no amps because we're not actually charging it. We then can use the plus button to scroll through the current status screen. So we've got the cell voltage is shown, total pack voltage, as well as the little balance information down there. We've got the battery internal resistance measurement and then the input status and power. So currently it's showing that we're connected via USB-C power delivery. It's currently selected a maximum of 60 watt. It's getting 20 volts and up to three amps. And then it takes us back to the home screen. If we wanted to charge a battery, it's really straightforward, pretty much the same as any other LiPo charger out there. What we do is simply press the center button. We then have our battery type, so we can select LiPo and all of the other types of batteries that you come to expect, all the way down to PD. If you wanted to charge a lead acid, for this, we're going to use LiPo. You can then choose the cell type. So at the moment it's auto selected 6S because that's what I've got attached. But you can obviously manually set that if you want to down to 1S as well. We've got our task. So we can select balance charge, normal charge, storage charge or discharge. And this charger does allow you to discharge internally as well. For this, we're gonna select balance charge. We've got our voltage condition, so what we want the end voltage to actually be. Obviously, this is a LiPo, so it's preset to 4.2. We've then got the available charge current that we can set all the way up to 10 amps because this charger does support up to 200 watts. However, it is worth noting if you're charging this on power delivery, you're not going to be able to have that maximum output. You are limited by the power delivery input, but we can select 10 amps for the purpose of this. And then we have simply got the option to start. When you do that, it'll make a nice sound and then it'll give us the current status. You can see we're charging at about one amp, which is drawing about 26 watts. And then we've got the milliamp hour going in down there, telling us how much we've actually put into the pack. Once it's complete, you can see it simply shows done on the display and it plays a nice little tune. And then you can simply scroll through the menu to check the current cell voltages. You can look at the internal resistance and all of the same screens that you've seen as the charger is in progress. There are other options available on this charger as well. If we press and hold our enter button, that'll take us into the main system settings where we can set the task parameter option. So if we go into that, we can set a safety timer so it turns itself off after a period of time, maximum charge capacity, 
capacity, trickle charge option, holding voltage options. We can then go down into system settings. We've got our language, our minimum input power, as well as our backlight and volume and tones for the battery's charge status. We've then got the DC power options because you can use this as a DC power supply as well. So you can select the output voltage as well as the output current that you want to supply. We have an option to use it as a battery meter. So what this will do is allow you to actually check the pack that you've got attached. So again, if we just plug this battery in and plug it onto the balance port, what we can actually do is do that again. And what it will do is actually do a check on the battery and it will allow us to have a look at what the internal resistance is like without actually charging it. We've then got the option for factory reset, system info screen, which tells us stuff such as the hardware version, the firmware version, as well as the serial number. And then finally at the bottom, you've got the system upgrade option, which allows you to upgrade the firmware via the USB port with the software that you can download from the Sky RC website. Now, with regards to the charging capability via the USB-C port, there are some things you need to be aware of. This is going to be dependent on the power supply. For instance, I've currently got this hooked up to a Blue Eti EB55, which supports up to 100 watts of output on the USB-C. However, the charger has selected the 60 watt option and it isn't giving us the full 80 watts that it is capable of. Now, the power delivery input will be dependent on the output of your device, i.e. your power supply and the cable you're using as well. I'm using a very short cable here and don't underestimate the effect the cable can have. You may have a power supply that's capable of 100 watts, but if the cable isn't, your charger is not going to allow you that maximum output. Now, in my test, about the maximum I've been able to get on this is about 54, 55 watts. So for instance, if I just show you this, we've currently got it set to 6S, 10 amp. I'll set it to 10 amp because it won't go to that anyway. And if I hit start, you'll see it kick in. It'll begin to charge the battery. So we're currently at 3.3 volts. You can see it's kicking into about 44, 46 to 50. And if I have a look at this on the front of my Bluetti, I'm getting 50, 51 watts of power output on that USB-C port at the moment. I haven't been able to get any more than that in my tests. But again, as I've already said, it will be dependent on what your power supply is capable of delivering, as well as what your cable is going to allow as well. Now, when the charge is in use, you will be able to hear the fan. That is obviously to allow the device to be able to cool itself. You can see that running down there. It certainly isn't a silent charger, but it isn't particularly loud, but you are going to hear it is in use. Now, with regards to accuracy on this, you can see we've just finished a charge on this 6S pack and we're showing 4.200 volts across the board or 25.20 for the full pack. Now, I've done a bunch of testing on this and I've checked it with these, some of my ISDT battery checkers. And what is interesting is if you actually check it against these, you will see a variance. So for instance, if I just put that one on there and put that one there, you can see actually the voltages are showing quite a bit different at times. You got 4.208, 4.209, 4.204. That's all really good. Then we've got 4.228, which is a bit odd, 4.208 and a total pack voltage of 25.42. Now I do actually have two of these and if we check it on the other one, we get some similar results. However, don't necessarily think that that means that this charger isn't right because what we've then done, and if we just look at the cells here, you can see that one that showed you 4.22 before is now showing 4.208. So what I've actually done is checked it with my trusty EEV blog multimeter, and I've done a bunch of testing and here, on a very crude diagram, you can see what we got on each of the ISDT battery testers and then what I'm getting on the multimeter. And the reality is, whilst this isn't perfect, it certainly isn't dramatically out. The furthest out we've got is 4.209. We've then got the others, which are all fairly close, with the total pack voltage coming in at 25.23. Whilst I'd have liked that at 25.20, it's very close, and in fact, it's more accurate than these little battery testers.
Another quick nice feature on the charger is that you can also use it as a battery checker. So for instance, we can just plug in our balance port and if we wait a second, you'll see that the display will come on and give us the voltage of each of the cells. When you put it in this mode, you can't actually do anything as far as I can tell. So you can't put it onto discharge or nothing like that, but it does give you the display of what's going on with the pack. The B6 Neo also has a discharge feature built in as well as I showed earlier. Now this isn't pass through as far as I can tell, so it's not going out to the DC, but it will discharge in Internally. It allows you to set it up to 2 amps or what appears to be around 23 watts. So depending obviously on your battery voltage is going to depend how many amps you're going to be able to take out. But on 6S we're talking about 0.9 amp. But you can use that internal discharge feature if you want to put your packs down to say storage voltage. Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the Sky RC B6 Neo. Overall, what is not to like about this charger? Small, portable, lightweight, and up to 200 watts of output, battery testing, and that USB-C capability. About the only thing I would love to have seen on this would have been a USB output as well as an input, allowing you to use it as a battery power bank with a LiPo. However, that is an end of the world. But what I think you're getting here for the money, because this charger costs about £30, $35 from what I've seen on Online. You're getting a good battery charger, decent output, small and lightweight, really an absolute ideal charger for the backpack or a second or third spare charger to have around the workshop if you need it. If you're interested in getting one, I will put a link to it in the description. I want to say thank you to SkyRC for sending this one over. I'm really interested in hearing what you think about this as well. I've done all of my testing. I can find no complaints. But if there is anything you'd like to know, please do let me know and I will try and answer it. Finally, I want to say a thank you for spending some time with me today. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there is a link to my Patreon in the description. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.